Do it because you love it. Like follow, follow your passion. You follow your passion and things will work out, regardless of, of what it is. Try and be wise. <laughs> Longevity. Longevity is everything. Take care of your body. Just remember that there is life after snowboarding. Living in Salt Lake was awesome, but I ended up starting, like I started spending more and more time up in Whistler in the spring and on down days I'd be like, oh, I'll go stay with a friend that lived in town here and just ended up staying here for, I think I was here for like two weeks and I just kind of got to like know the town a bit, like go out on runs or go out to eat and kind of just saw more and more people that I knew in town. I don't know, it just kind of captured like captured my heart like it's so cool to be on the ocean and then an hour and 15 minutes away from Baker which is awesome and then it's like I'm two hours from Whistler and just with what I'm doing more these days it just makes more sense to be based up here this is where the filming's at like if you want to film a video part you have to you have to go to Whistler like the riding and the terrain is is the best For me, not maybe being in a place very long, like just constantly traveling and constantly like not having like a real routine schedule or something like that's the one thing that I look at them all, man, it'd be so nice to like be home for more than like two weeks or to be able to like have a garden and like just be home and have like the regular kind of life and routine that, that a lot of people have. Not being able to be home like in one place for any like decent amount of time is one of the negatives. Like not getting to like see friends and, and make certain occasions and go to family events. It's like you sacrifice that, you put snowboarding as a priority above that. Backcountry snowboarding, you have to you have to have so many things line up, and you have to have so much knowledge and access to capture that because it's such a small, like a niche market. You have to first of all live near sled zones, have a sled, have a truck or a trailer or something to get the sleds there, and then once you get there, it's like you have to know the zone or at least know where to go. You have to know the snow conditions. You have to, there's so many different variables that come into play when you go out. You have to have good weather. I mean, for everything you have to have good weather, but in the back country, it's like if you go out and you don't know a zone and you don't know the snow conditions and you're not prepared, you could fully die or you could put other people in jeopardy and it's just a little more high stakes. And then um, going out there and filming, it's like every time you drop into something, you could potentially hurt yourself really bad if you don't have a solid support system around you that knows how to handle that, and knows how to get you out of those situations. It can turn into a really, really bad scenario. It's a very real thing. It's like if somebody, if somebody gets caught in the abbey, how are you gonna get them out? Can you resuscitate them if need be? Can you splint them if they're bleeding? Can you stop the bleeding? Like, like, there's a lot that I think we just don't really think about. But once you think about it, you're all, oh crap, I should start carrying this and that. And like, how do we not have like a sat phone or first aid kit or just stuff like that. It's like any like backcountry guide, wilderness person would probably be like, you're, you're silly for not carrying that type of stuff all the time. Especially when you're jumping off of cliffs and chucking yourself. It's like, 
the factor for injury just gets multiplied so much. I might be kind of biased, but I just think it's so much that has to line up in order to get the get the shot, and it's hard to it's hard to communicate that to people that don't know. And it's hard to capture just how difficult it can be at times to get that one shot. I definitely started out my career doing contests, but I think as I got older and kind of got to see more sides of snowboarding, the, the filming and the backcountry aspect really caught my attention. There was definitely a point where I was like, what am I doing? Like, this is not making me happy. Like, these contests are sweet and all, but it's not fulfilling me as far as snowboarding. Like, I wanted to do more, like, I didn't, I didn't, really care like none of those big wins ever really got me as excited or as like stoked as landing a, a trick in the backcountry that you really wanted to try. I feel super like grateful that the companies that I've rode for have stood by me and like really believed in what I want to do and the, the direction I wanted to go in snowboarding because not a lot of not a lot of companies would do that. I think a lot of the girls that I see coming up, they just freaking live. They eat, sleep, breathe snowboarding. And that is so rad to see. Cause it's so, like it's just all in. Like that's what snowboarding is. It's a freaking, it's a lifestyle. 